BYU Cougar basketball is back in action. Baxter outside the left junction hands it off to Hawes. Lob it up for Gary Elliott. Yes. Throw down. Let's get you ready to root on the boys in blue. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Pregame Live is sponsored by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, guiding members forward for more than 80 years. Cougar Pregame Live is also brought to you by Quick Quack Car Wash. Fast, clean, loved everywhere. Now, here's your host, Jason Shepard. Good afternoon, BYU basketball fans. Welcome into Cougar Pregame Live, always presented by Mountain America, guiding members forward for more than 80 years. Today, the BYU Cougars will look to bounce back from a disappointing loss yesterday as they face the St. John's Red Storm. Hey, it's a good day. BYU has an opportunity to bounce back after a tough loss. We've got the NFL on in the background. It's a good day to be talking about sports, and we're focusing on BYU basketball. Now, yesterday... Not so great of a day. The Cougars lost to USC 79-53 in their first game at the Legends Classic in Connecticut. The loss dropped BYU's record to 3-1 and one overall. Shooting, or maybe lack thereof, was actually the issue against the Trojans. Coming into that game, BYU was shooting 54% from the field and 43% from three. But against the Trojans, the Cougars shot just 28 and 23% respectively. Matt Harms got his first start and finished with 11 points and 6 rebounds. It was certainly good to see him getting the extended minutes. In fact, it looked like all minutes restrictions were taken off, so it was good to see that. Gideon George was the uh, the only other BYU player to score in double figures, and he was a big bright spot as well. Just like Matt Harms, he finished with 11 points and 6 rebounds. And beyond just the points, I really thought Gideon played with a lot of energy. That was really good to see yesterday. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm really looking for a lot of that out of Gideon George. That's certainly one of the things that he brings. And uh, I'll talk uh, about that with assistant coach Chris Burgess coming up in just a few minutes. Now that brings us to today's matchup with St. John's. The Red Storm, they are 3-0 and coming off of a 97 97- to 93 win over Boston College on Monday. St. John's averages 85 points per game and shoots 46% from the field, 36% from three. This is the ninth time that these two teams have played, but the first time they've met since all the way back in 1990, St. John's leads the all-time series 7-1. to one. Now the Red Storm have four of their start. Four out of their uh, five starters averaging in double figures, led by Vince Cole with 16. However, the player that actually leads the team in scoring is freshman Julian Julian Champagny. And go look how he spells that name. That is not how I would... uh, It looks like Champagne, but it's pronounced Champagny. Uh, He played in one game, but came off the bench to score 29 points. So he actually leads the team in scoring. This is a team that is balanced in terms of where... The scoring comes from. It will be another good test for the Cougars who are looking to improve on their performance yesterday. And speaking of the game yesterday, I talked with assistant coach Chris Burgess for today's pregame interview and asked Chris what he and the other coaches saw when they evaluated the game against the Trojans. First half, I was pretty proud of our effort defensively um, and guarding, you know, their personnel and their actions. You know, it was a team in their first couple games that was very efficient offensively and really attacked the glass, they attacked the post, and they score a ton off ball screens. And to hold a team like that in the first half at 31 points, um, you know, eight points came off offensive rebounds, and that was a big key. So if we take those, you know, if we do a better job in the glass in the first half, you know, we hold a, a really talented team to 23 points and give ourselves a chance um, in the second half with shots not really falling, right? And so I was proud of the defensive energy and the effort. We just, we let um, miss shots and frustration on the offense and kind of seep into the second half and it, uh, it affected us. And, and, and you, to USC's credit, they really took advantage of it and really poured it on us in the second half. And obviously it was too much for us to overcome. Um, but a lot of things we can learn from it as, as a new team um, with a lot of new players and a lot of new roles. I think there's a ton of stuff that we can learn from this game. When you prepare for a team like that, that we say is going to crash the offensive glass and, you know, they're really good in the post, um, you know, you, you got to listen and we got to be better. We got to be better as coaches and we got to be better as, as players to really lock in. And, you know, listen, we missed some shots and they were good shots, right? We had, I think, 15 offensive rebounds and, you know, we didn't get any points out of it, but like we missed some good shots. We just, we got to keep, keep shooting those open shots and keep trusting the extra pass and, and, you know, eventually the shots are going to fall. That's, that's what we, we, it's what we do. And, 
and we believe in that. And so we got to keep crashing that glass. So the fact that we got off 15 offense rebound against a really um, long USC team and we held them to 31 points, there's there's some good things to take out of this. And there's some things that we just got to get better and learn from. And, and we will, starting with St. John's. Everybody always wants to win the game and you want to hit every shot you take. But can you at least, I don't know, deal with it a little bit better if the shots that are being taken are at least within the offense that you're at least getting the shots that you want? Yeah, you know, like you look at the game and we've watched it um, a couple of times. I don't think there was selfish shots, right? Like we, like you said, we took, we took shots within the offense that are wide open. We got offensive rebounds. And when we didn't have a shot at the rim, we kicked it out. I think we got five open threes off offensive rebounds. You know, they you just, you know, we just didn't shoot the ball great. And so, and sometimes you got to get, you know, as, as a team offensively, when the shots aren't going, maybe, you know, there's times that you got to get to the free throw line, right? And you, you got to work hard to, you know, get, get a piece of the paint and maybe a dump off for, for a layup or a dunk just to, you know, kind of get the, the rim to open up a little bit. But, you know, when we're running our offense or we're getting open threes, that's the way we play, right? That's what we do. So there's some good things out of it that we got, you know, that we can learn, that we can piggyback off in our, our games to come. And again, like there's, you can, this game teaches you so much, right? We didn't have, we, you know, we played three games. We didn't have an exhibition or a scrimmage. And this was our first, you know, probably top 100 team, if you will, in Ken Palm. And, 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 and we learned a little bit about ourselves and, and what it takes to be a really good team and to, to, to stay in the game with really good teams. And so you, you know, there, there's things we learned from tonight and it's only going to prepare us for when conference starts, because as you know, this schedule and this non-conference, it doesn't get any easier. It just right. doesn't, right? Like home or away with San Diego State and Utah State and the U and St. John's and Boise, like it's just going to get tougher. And so um, we, we can't feel sorry for ourselves. We, we, we got to get some rest, get some rest and get ready for the game. And man, we, we got to compete. We got to compete. And even when you're playing great and you're missing shots, sometimes that just isn't good enough. Right. And, 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 and as legally as you can, you, you got to compete and punch them back in the mouth. Right. Like they, we, we, it's just it's just the what sports is. It's just the, and our guys will. Right. Like it, our guys will. It's our first real adversity test tonight. And so, uh, you know, against against USC. So we're looking forward. We're looking forward to see how we, we bounce back. Two things that stood out to me from a positive standpoint. I, I love the fact that you're able to get more of Matt Harms now. And is able to play more minutes. I thought that was good and productive minutes. I also thought Gideon George was a guy that stood out. I, I really thought his athleticism and energy was really positive. Where do you think Gideon can make his greatest impact on this year's team? It was good to see Matt get some more minutes tonight and get a couple buckets and have three blocks. But with Gideon, right, I think the game is slowing down for him, right? Um, usually when kids come from high school or junior college, you know, the biggest transition they have at the next level of Division One is just the game is so fast. And he did not get sped up tonight, right? Like, you know, he took shots within the offense. He rebounded really well. He had some man-sized rebounds offensively, you know. And, and then he had, like, you know, he had a couple – post moves where he's really patient he got his guy in the air and, and you know made some nice turnarounds and you know he's a kid like we've been you know that's why we recruited him we think he's a good player and we think he's just scratching the surface of what he can do and his length and athleticism um, allows him to belong against you know the teams like USC right that have seven footers and six eleven guys at their four spot and so I just loved how, how calm he was on the offense end how he didn't force anything and how he com like he competed and didn't back down to the challenge, you know, and and he he's he's a kid that can play the three spot for us and he can play the four spot for us when we when we want to play smaller lineups because I think he can defend one through four, right, and and sometimes one through five depending on matchups, but it was a bright spot for us, especially defense, especially offensively. He can obviously get a lot better too on both ends of the floor, but it's it's someone like for us to be us to be where we want to go this year he he's got to be he's got to keep growing and, and, and getting better and kind of grow into this role of a, a very very um nice player off the bench for us that's kind of a spark all right chris let's wrap things up by uh, focusing on the opponent the uh, red storm of st john's they come in three and oh it's another good team but we were talking before we started rolling on this it's a different team than you faced yeah so this team st john's they're you know they're three and oh like you said and they're much different than usc usc is going to kind of walk it up at times and they're going to use their their size and their length and ball screens and kind of beat you in the post and beat you on the glass um and st john's is gonna you know they don't run a lot of sets they're they're gonna run and transition any chance they can right they're gonna push it up on makes on misses after free throws it doesn't matter and they're gonna try to score at the rim 
course, they've got some three-point shooters here and there, and that's not really what they do so far this season. They, they want to score at the rim and transition. And then defensively, like they're going to switch one through five. They're going to press us with multiple different um, pressers, whether it's a 2-2-1, two, two, a 1-2-2, two, two, full court, three-quarter court. They're going to try to take your ball, right? They're going to try to get deflections and – it's going to feel a lot different pace from US, USC game and more of like a New Orleans, right? Just just a better team, a Big East team. And so we have to, as a team, protect this basketball, make the simple play, take and shoot open shots. I think we can score at the rim um, and I think we can get open shots as long as we'll make ourselves available offensively and not run away from the press, right? Sometimes in the press is... You know, when team presses, people in the back or the front court want to run away from the ball. No, you got to run towards the ball and make a play. If we do that, we make catches. We're going to give ourselves an opportunity to win. Um, you know, St. John's against Boston College at one point early in the game, they're down 10. And then in the middle of the game, they're up 20. And then late in the game, they're up one, right? Like it doesn't matter the lead or the deficit by St. John's. They play the same way. And you just got to uh, stay focused for 40 minutes because uh, it's going to be an interesting game, a fun game and a, and a much different opponent. And with this kind of turnaround, you know, playing the next night, uh, not a, t a lot of time to prepare other than protect this ball, play with force and, and, and make yourself available to get catches. You know, after a loss, everybody wants to just get right back out on the floor. And you guys have the opportunity to do that with the back to back situation. Chris, great stuff. Appreciate the insight. Good luck against the Red Storm. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. That's BYU assistant coach Chris Burgess. Want to pass along? BYU will have a new starting lineup for tonight. Mark Pope telling uh, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, that uh, Caleb Lohner will be inserted into the starting lineup. That'll be his second start as a BYU Cougar. He will be replacing Colby Lee, who will be coming off the bench. So you're starting five this afternoon for BYU will be Averett, Barcelo, Harding, Lohner, and Matt Harms. This season, BYU basketball and Mountain America Credit Union are changing lives. For each three-pointer BYU makes, Mountain America will donate $50 to the American Red Cross to help fund humanitarian services and programs. Coming up next, we'll head out to the Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut. And we'll talk with Mark Durant, our courtside conversation coming your way next as Cougar Pregame Live presented by Mountain America Credit Union rolls on on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with more Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Cougars versus the Red Storm, BYU versus St. John's, BYU's second and final game at the Legends Classic in Uncasville, Connecticut. This is where we'll head now, the Mohegan Sun Arena, it's where the game will be played. And joining us, former BYU basketball player and our radio analyst, his name is Mark Duran. It's time for our courtside conversation. Hi, Mark. How are you today? Jason, I'm doing great. I've fully recovered from the devastating loss yesterday. <laughs> I'm positive now. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to see a victory. Well, I'm glad that you're positive because I'm going to take a positive spin. You obviously want to play better. And more times than not, after a loss, how many times do we hear players say, man, I wish we could just get right back out there and play again? Well, in a back-to-back -back situation like this, BYU basketball has an opportunity. As a player, how nice is that to be able to get that bad taste out of your mouth quickly? Yeah, it's super nice. You don't get that chance most times. If it's postseason and you lose, you don't get to play the next night. But sometimes in these preseason tournaments, you get to play right after you've lost. And, man, that's good as a player because I tell you, there's nothing more miserable in the world <laughs> than losing a game and the coaches are ticked at you. You're upset with yourself, and it's just miserable time. The worst thing that ever happened was – if you lost right before, like, Christmas break or something. It was like a week, and you had to sit with that. But So it's good that they get to play today, and hopefully we'll play better and we'll play with the, you know, that, that loss yesterday will be a motiva motivation for them and not something that will erode their confidence but just give them a little fire, and hopefully they play better today because, l listen, it doesn't get much easier in the next couple weeks. They need to, to, to figure things out quickly and learn how to play and learn how to win because they, they've got some really tough games coming up the next two weeks. Coach Pope told Greg in the pregame interview, which everyone will be able to hear in about 20, 25 minutes or so in its entirety, uh, but he mentioned to Greg, and then Greg tweeted out there's going to be a lineup change. Uh, one change, Caleb Lohner is going to come into the starting lineup. Colby Lee will now come off the bench. What do you think the coaches are looking for with this lineup change? 
Well, I think that's interesting because Caleb hasn't played particularly well. He's struggling from the three-point line. And uh, I, I think what it is is it's hard to have Harms and Lee function the way they want together on the floor at the same time in that Lee's such a, a big body and he kind of clogs up the paint a little bit. Maybe they're looking to clear out things a little bit more for Harms and Caleb's a guy notwithstanding his struggles from the three-point line is he, he can play on the perimeter and he's a lot more mobile uh, but I, I, I certainly like the idea of giving Caleb as much time as possible and, and getting him experience because I think he, he's going to be a special player but it, it's hard when you're trying to win and you're struggling a little bit uh, you know you, you want to play guys that are playing well and that can make you win and I so uh, we'll see Caleb start, but I'd like to see a guy maybe like Wyatt Lowell, who, who's a good three-point shooter, but can also play that position as tall. Gideon George, who's a little smaller, but can play that position, and he's been playing well. So th this is a good opportunity for Caleb, but he needs to, to play a little bit better today to kind of merit the, the, the minutes that uh, he, he's going to get. Otherwise, you need you need to plug someone in who's playing a little bit better. Not not, not to say Caleb's not a good player. I, we all know that. He's going to be awesome. But it's just about where guys are at at this immediate moment in winning games today. I don't know if you had an opportunity to hear the interview in the last segment that I had with Coach Burgess, but he was talking about this St. John's team. And, and I was telling him, the one thing that stood out to me is there's, it's not really one or two real go-to guys. Their scoring is spread out across their roster. So it's a pretty balanced team. But Coach Burgess was talking about the fact that maybe they're not going to run a ton of offensive sets. They really want to push the ball. They want to get you in transition. What what stands out to you about this Red Storm team that while BYU's playing in back-to-back -back situations, St. John's hasn't played till Monday, so they've had a little bit more time to kind of watch BYU and, and prepare for them? Well, I look at St. John's a, a little bit like a smaller and uh, a little less disciplined uh, USC, but very athletic, very long. I think Pasha Alexander's an exciting uh, young freshman player who's – he kind of he'll get up and down the floor and do his thing, and and then of course Champagny had, had an amazing game against Boston College, so he, clearly he can score, and uh, so it, it's going to be another challenge athletically for BYU, but not quite as they're not quite as long inside, so I don't know that we'll see another 15 offensive rebound night without any second chance points. I think that, that that'll be more of a strength for BYU, and will be a key to this game is not just getting rebounds, but and going and, and punishing the team for that, and getting good second-chance points. So it, it's going to be a challenge just because uh, they're just super athletic. And so the, the fear you have is what if it happens again where they get a little bit of a lead and can really unleash that uh, playground athleticism, you know, type ball, and then, then it's look out <laughs> BYU. But you can come out, shoot a little bit better, get maybe get a little bit of a lead. Uh, I think that the, the game will be uh, much different than yesterday. I think the obvious answer to this question is Alex Barcelo. So I'm going to kind of take him off the table. But besides A.B., if BYU has to have a bucket right now, who do you think that guy is right now to pick up that needed score? Well, that, that's kind of the problem right now is that I, I don't know that there is. I guess I would say uh, Brandon Averett is, has the ability off the dribble uh, to get in the paint and, and score. Um, but, I mean, it's hard. I would like – uh, Connor Harding to be that guy I think he could be I still think he maybe doesn't see himself in that role as he should uh, that Jake Toulson role where I'm going to I'm going to go post up or I'm going to you know, get us this three here and uh, I, th I think he can I think uh, I expect that from him and we just really haven't seen it so probably in that order uh, Brandon Averett and, uh, and Connor Harding of course now that you have Matt Harms, I think he's more than capable of, of trying to run a set for him where he gets a catch down low and then posts up his guy. We're running that, that uh, pick and roll was very effective in the first half. So he, he, he's certainly a guy that can get a bucket for you as well. It's not like you don't have guys that can go get a bucket, but there, there seems to be kind of a question mark even on the team in, in a time when we really need something. Who is the guy that's going to step up and get us it? Uh, uh, that, that's one of the reasons I really like Gideon George last night because he, he was a guy that said, I'll give me the ball, I'll go do it, and uh, was very aggressive and had some success. So it needs to be more of that attitude on, on all those guys. 
All right, Mark, last question. Ken Garf Honda, Nissan, and Volkswagen and Orem proudly present our keys to the game. Mark, what are your keys to today's game? <laughs> well, I'd like to see some better three-point shooting. I think if BYU can be around 40%, they win going away. Uh, also, I mentioned uh, second-chance points. I, I think BYU's got to at least be above uh, the offensive rebound number with those points. Well, and look, I mean, BYU's only played the four games. We understand that. But the shooting that we saw, especially from the perimeter against USC, is the anomaly because in the previous three games, BYU shot the ball well. I think chances are better today that they shoot the ball better just because that's so far what we've seen out of them. Um, and I agree with you. I, I was really impressed with Gideon George. I, I loved the energy and the athleticism that he brought to that game to the game yesterday. And I really think that could be a massive role for him as being that energy guy that can come in and yeah. just with his athleticism get you a couple of extra rebounds, which then leads to more points. I really liked what I saw from Gideon. Well, if nothing else, he, it earned him more time. And I think the more time he's on the floor, the more confident he'll get in his abilities and he'll kind of figure out, yeah, I can do this. And and it, he can really become a player. So I'd like to see more time from him. And what you don't want is that fluke game to then be, be become the norm. You want, you want the norm to be those other three games. And so it's important to, to really turn it around right now and, and get back on the right track today. Good stuff, Mark. Thanks for the time as always. Uh, enjoy uh, your the rest of your time in Connecticut and have a good call with Greg. All right. After the game, we're going to celebrate with some champagne. Nice. I, by the way, every time I see the name, I am, and you can appreciate this because you'll get the reference. At least I hope you do. Otherwise, I'm going to be throwing myself out to dry here on the air. Every time I see the name and then that it's pronounced champagne, I immediately think of the Continental on Saturday Night Live. Do you know what I'm uh, talking about? Uh, yeah, that's that's old school. It's man. old school, but that's what it reminds me of. And now I've dated <laughs> okay. myself. All right, Mark. Uh, well, you are old, man, but you look good. <laughs> Thank you. That's Mark Durant, our courtside conversation. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the Continental from SNL, look it up. It's hilarious, okay? All right, after a quick timeout, we'll look at some other scores in college hoops. There are other games. Plus, how about a Wednesday afternoon NFL game? Yeah, we'll update you on the Steelers and the Ravens. They're finally playing their game. We'll get to that when we come back. Cougar pregame live. One more segment on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Cougar pregame live with your host, Jason Shepard. Fans, remember when the Cougars win, you win with Papa John's Pizza with a BYU victory today. Pizza will be 50% off at PapaJohns.com tomorrow when you use the online promo code BYU50. This offer good at any Utah location. Let's update you on some action in college basketball. It is a final Indiana taking down Stanford 79-63. to And uh, just underway between number 17 Texas and number 14 North Carolina, the Tar Heels leading the Longhorns 9-8. to Again, that one early in the first half. An update on the NFL game. The Baltimore Ravens leading in Pittsburgh over the Steelers in the second quarter by a score of 7-6. to six. All right, coming up on the other side, it is the Cougar pregame coaches show with Greg Rubel live from Connecticut. You're listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the inside scoop on today's game. This is the Zions Bank Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. The Cougar Pregame Coaches Show is also brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, guiding members forward for more than 80 years. Now, let's head back to the America First Credit Union courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good afternoon, Cougar basketball fans. For the second time in as many days, welcome high above courtside inside the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. Bubbleville, as today, BYU concludes play in the Legends Classic, taking on St. John's for the first time in 30 years. I'm Greg Grubel. I'll have your play-by-play -play call of this uh, Wednesday matinee. A matinee back in the mountain time zone, getting close to evening here in the east. I'm sitting alongside the former Cougar hoopster. He is Mark Durant. And uh, Mark, after an impressive 3-0 start, we didn't quite see coming what came yesterday. A 26-point loss to USC that uh, set a Mark Pope-era low for field goal percentage. Second worst scoring day 
and second worst three point percentage performance under Coach Pope, but all happening on the same day. Uh, he called it, Coach Pope did an unacceptable outcome. But as disappointed as he was, I think he was equally eager uh, for his guys to get back out on the floor, and they do it quickly uh, the day after. I mean, that was a drubbing, and I don't think anyone uh, on that staff or this uh, team has experienced that. I mean, that we didn't have any kind of games like that last year that they just were out of it completely and didn't make any kind of run at the end to get – get something back and it was so it was a pretty a uh, pretty big shock to the system and what you don't want greg is to have little cracks come into the team and that best locker room in america or confidence in your players or coaches you want to get that out of the system as quickly as possible because uh, you know as i learned for one thing from the natural greg is that losing is a disease and uh, you don't want that to catch fire like to go you don't want that to spread through the team you want the team to be confident winners have a little swagger and, and go out and take care of business and so the, the real concern is to not let any of that seep in and the best way to do that is to kind of erase that with a good performance and a victory today if you lose again today you're going to have some problems going forward and it's it's a scary road going forward so we'll see how the team performs we'll see if the cougars can find the victory vaccine today here <laughs> In Connecticut. Coming up, my uh, pregame conversation with BYU head coach Mark Pope as Designs Bank Cougar pregame coaches show continues live from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut on the new skin BYU Sports Network. Tune to the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show. For more with head coach Mark Pope, let's rejoin your host, Greg Rubel. We are live in Bubbleville, the name given to the Mohegan Sun Arena here in rural Connecticut uh, with a few dozen college basketball teams congregating here for more or less nonstop hoops over a two-week period. COVID protocols, strenuous. Seen a few hitches out here, but... uh, a ton of teams have uh, used these hardwoods to get their seasons off to solid starts, and the game before us is a, just a slog trying to get this one over with. Uh, Florida leads Army by a score of 71-69. to 69. Florida was uh, heavily favored today and just grinding to get rid of Army in this one, so it's a two-point game with uh, 39.5 seconds to play, and Florida going to the free-throw line to shoot two in the double bonus. So Florida 71, Army 69, and the Cougars cannot take the floor to warm up even until this game is over, so might be a longer than normal pregame show depending on how long this game in front of us goes and it is in the closing seconds but overtime is a possibility a more distinct possibility unless uh, Florida makes two free throws here right in front of us well at 3-0 BYU was cruising then yesterday came the crash and this one activated the airbags USC 79 BYU 53 a game that uh, had BYU head coach Mark Pope equal parts upset and determined as he shares with us now in our pregame interview, brought to you by Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. Certainly a ton of frustration on our guys' part, uh, a, a ton of humility coming our way, which is actually a really positive thing and, and a big-time challenge all coming our way. It is, uh, you know, you, you play these non-conference games and these non-conference schedules to kind of put yourself through the gauntlet to see where you need to get better and. And we got exposed in a lot of different ways last night, as I expect we will tonight. And so uh, the most important thing is that we have to keep learning and keep getting better every, every single day. And, and we clearly have a lot of room for growth. If there were one thing that you could improve from yesterday to today, what would it be? A much different challenge. I think, you know, overall, um, the thing I'd like to see our team do is I'd like to see us uh, compete. Um, and we, we worked hard yesterday. And we tried hard yesterday. Um, you know, we had 15 offensive rebounds, which is actually really a spectacular number for us. It's where we want to live. We were, you know, we held them to 31 points in the first half, which is, which is something that we, you know, we can hang our hats on a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, when it got down to it, uh, our just, our just um, determination from me through our bench down to the end of our players to just refuse to relent 
and I refuse to give in to frustration, refuse to give in to doubt, refuse to give in to all the things that attack you who reverse the game. Uh, clearly was an F grade for us, and we, we have to make some strides in that. So there's a hundred technical things we'd like to do uh, better. There's a lot of things we're going to have to do way different uh, just because of the different opponent. But at the core of it, our competitive nature has got to always uh, meet a minimum, and it didn't yesterday. You mentioned offensive rebounds. Over the years, I've come to expect kind of a one-to-one -one ratio to be a good ratio in terms of offensive rebounds and second chance points. And the second chance points were not coming off those offensive rebounds against uh, USC. I've actually never seen that before in my basketball life, um, which is, you know, it's just a, it's a long time, an old man. Um, and so that was a, you know, certainly an aberration, but it was, you know, it wasn't an aberration uh, that was completely due to weirdness, right? Um, you know, we, we, we have to get better. And there were some stagnant, you know, we had some stagnant bodies when we got off its rebound. Uh, you know, we weren't filling the corners like we have in the past, which is so important. The perimeter guys weren't getting the angles. Our uh, bigs coming down with rebounds. Our decision-making was relatively poor. And and um, so, again, it's, it's, uh, it's such a positive as a team, as a benchmark, to come up with 15 offensive rebounds. Clearly, Part of that was due to us missing a lot of shots, which is semi uncharacteristic for us. But, um, but then uh, you know we have to take it the next step and actually, uh, you know, get something out of those second chance opportunities. We failed to do that last night. Do you plan to start uh, the same way today against uh, St. John's? We're going to move. Uh, we're going to move Caleb back into the starting lineup uh, with Matt Harms. Um, real challenge for us is um, is just actually being able to keep up with the pace of this game. Um, we'll try and take our spots at playing um, two more traditional bigs, um, but, but we, we have some real ball movement challenges tonight um, and some body movement challenges and some, some, some get to a catch and make yourself present challenges tonight that are gonna be better served with a little bit, a little bit of a lean towards a, a little bit smaller lineup tonight. Man, it's a big springboard game heading into a weekend game at Utah State. Uh, getting a split would be huge for you guys coming out of here. It's all we have left. So the alternative is to go over. So we need to get the split. We've got to find a way to do it. And, and hopefully this will this will be a, a really um, incredible opportunity for our team to grow together. And, and hopefully our guys and our staff can find a way to make it that. That That is the goal tonight. And um, and I, I know my guys. I know my guys. Um you know, we'll, we'll have setbacks this year, but I know these guys will pull together, and I know that they'll fight with kind of every ounce of blood and sweat and tears that they have, and so I expect to see that tonight. Coach, thanks for the chat. We'll talk to you post game. Good luck. Thanks, Greg. All right, that is Mark Pope and today's Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show. If you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, try Smith's Click List. Order online, then pick up curbside by the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. Coming up next, it is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show, live from the Mohegan Sun Arena on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's almost time to hit the hardwood. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. The Cougar Tip-Off Show is also brought to you by BYU Dining, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Also by Siegfried & Jensen. Siegfried & Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 30 years. Now let's head live to the America First Credit Union courtside seats and join Mark Durant alongside the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good afternoon once again, Cougar Nation. We welcome you back inside the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut for BYU's getaway game at the Legends Classic as today BYU squares off against undefeated St. John's. The Red Storm 3-0 after a Monday night win over Boston College here in Bubbleville. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Greg Grubel, Mark Durant with you from high above courtside. Jason Shepard is our studio host. Our control board operator, Liam Howard. Terry South is our coordinating producer. Our BYU radio engineers are Sean Fay and Barry Squires. Bryce Larson is our broadcast intern at BYU Radio. 
You're listening to us live on the new skin BYU Sports Network, headed by our satellite flagship BYU Radio, Sirius XM 143 and 89.1 FM HD2. Our over-the-air flagship is KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. We are also heard on network affiliates and on the BYU Cougars app, the BYU Radio app, the BYU Game Day app, plus BYUCougars.com slash live radio and BYURadio.org. You can hear play-by-play archives and the highlights by subscribing to the BYU Basketball Podcast. Well, as with any team, BYU's starters are essentially you know, the best players, uh, but yesterday against USC, the starting group combined to shoot 25% from the field, 11 for 44 on their shots. Coming into the game, the starting guards and the wing, the trio of Averett, Barcelo, and Harding, were averaging 44 points per game. Yesterday, they combined to score 10 on 4 of 24 shooting, 2 for 11 from deep. The game was lost in many ways, but the guard line was essentially, you know, kind of a no-show for BYU yesterday. And these uh, these are two seniors and a junior. Mark, their leadership and their scoring will be essential today as BYU's in bounce-back mode against St. John's. Yeah, I mean... Uh Listen, BYU's got a lot of scores other than those three guys, but a lot of those guys don't really know how to score yet. And what I mean by that is Barcelo and Averett and and Harding are, are guys that have experience and, and know how to get buckets. And teams need to have a, a confidence that certain guys are going to perform at a certain level for you. Like when I played, I knew Russ Larson and Ken Roberts were going to get – 35 40 points a game i mean that's just that was just going to happen and then we'd all fill in around that and when you got guys that you expect to get those 30 or 40 points and they they give you five or ten i mean then you're asking the other guys to be the scorers and they're not used to that i mean they can score fine and you know the new orleans games and those kind of things but to throw them against usc and say we need those 40 points from you guys it's unrealistic so it really isn't coming upon those guys, and it's a lot of pressure, but, hey, tough. I mean, you're a college basketball player. You get a lot of glory from it. You get the hard stuff, too. And so those guys need to step up and make sure that they're getting that base of points for your team to be successful. And then the other guys can fill in as, as, they, as they can. But the much better performance needed from – from particularly those three. All right, he is Mark Durant. Our pregame coverage continuing. This game will not start on time. It was to begin at 3 o'clock Mountain Time. The game before us went long, and so the countdown clock is just at 19 minutes now. So we're looking at something probably closer to a, a 3.06, 3.07, 3.08 tip time for BYU and St. John's. Coming up after the break, uh, the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show does continue live from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut, on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is the Cooper Tip-Off Show. Let's head back live courtside and join Greg Rubel. Welcome back inside the Mohegan Sun Arena in Connecticut for BYU and St. John's and the Legends Classic. BYU playing back-to-back games in back-to-back days. St. John's has had a day between games after defeating Boston College on Monday night. High-scoring affair 97-93. Red Storm got 29-10 from forward Julian Champagny who missed the first two games with a sprained ankle. BYU's Matt Harms missed the first two games of BYU season with a sprained ankle. He played 12 minutes against UVU on the weekend, then got the start and played 24 yesterday against USC. Mark, we've already seen glimpses uh, of just how Harms will help this BYU team immensely. The quest will now be for consistency and chemistry as he gets to know his uh, new teammates on the floor. I think BYU's been at their best the last two games when he's been on the floor, and the best that they were yesterday was in that first half with Matt on the floor. I thought he was very effective, and uh, what I'd like to see is BYU working harder to get him in the right spots to be effective. I think one of the best plays BYU has is starting from uh, the the side of the floor on the wing and then having uh, Matt come up and and set a, a ball screen there. So Alex Barcelo or Brandon Averett, will go uh, off the screen, off the block, off the dribble. And what happens then is if that big guy guarding Harms shows it all on that to, to stop Averett or Barcelo, 
then immediately Harms is going to have the baseline position. And you saw it a couple times where they can just throw it up there. I mean, for guys freaking 7-3, <laughs> you, you just throw it up there, and uh, he'll catch it. And that's a good spot for him to score. He can dunk it. He can lay it in. He's not his best when he's catching it 10 feet away trying to back, uh, back a guy down. But it also allows – uh, Barcelo or, or Averett to, to be able to, to work off because if that big guy doesn't hedge, they, you know, it gets that weak spot in, in the defense, in the paint, pull up for that little runner or take it to the rim. That's a really good play, and I don't know why BYU went away from it in the second half, but they, but they did. But anyway, the point is you've got a really t- a good, talented big guy in there, and not only can you get him in a spot for, he, for him to be really successful, but when he's successful, that's going to help uh, open up other things for, for everybody else. So I really like Matt Harms. He's a difference maker. He does good things, and I just want to see more from him and get him more confident and more minutes on the floor. He'll have a new running mate today up front, uh, Caleb Lohner, back in the starting group. Yeah, I mean, what Caleb brings is a certain uh, quickness and athleticism that uh, maybe Colby doesn't bring, but Caleb's got to be better too. Everybody's got to be better. He's got to hit some threes. I know he can do it. He needs to get one to go in, and I think once he gets that one in, he's, he's going to be fine. But uh, he, he can't just be a pretty face and a pretty body out there. He's got to, 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 to do things for this team and help them win. Caleb Lohner, inside the arc, 7 for 10. Outside the arc, 0 for 11. BYU fans, whatever financial products and services you need to take care of yourself, your family, or your business, America First is here to help. To find out more, visit AmericaFirst.com today. BYU and St. John's coming up at the top of the hour, just after the top of the hour. Our pregame coverage continues next from the Mohegan Sun Arena here in Connecticut on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's rejoin Craig Rubel. BYU and St. John's straight ahead. BYU 3-1, and one, St. John's 3-0, and oh, ninth game in a series. The Red Storm leads seven games to one. Last meeting came in 1990. St. John's won that meeting at the Marriott Center. That was the first year uh, after Mark Durant's freshman season. Mark was on a mission, and, and the Cougar basketball team was, was just spent the entire year trying to recover from Mark's absence. Yeah, that's tough. And that was one of a string of losses where they just needed Mark on the floor, and he was nowhere to be found. Mark, only four games in, uh, but this season is going to get to late kind of early with only 27 games on the schedule. And after today, only six more non-conference games remain for BYU. At some point, we're going to see Coach Pope's a rotation tighten, meaning some of these guys are in the process of making right now, kind of like, like making a cut in a way, if you will. Uh, these are important games in the evolution of this team. Yeah, I mean, there's two reasons that the preseason is important. One is to try and get those big wins that will carry a lot of weight at the end of the year. But the second reason is to, to get their team in the best position for conference play. Uh, that's a real key. And and so you're trying to figure things out. you got so many new guys. You're trying to figure out rotations and chemistry. But as deep as BYU's team is, I just don't think you can afford to play more than eight or nine guys consistently because what you want to have are guys that know each other out on the floor. And, and know what this guy's going to do and where he's going to be at this moment. And I can trust this guy on the backside help. And, I mean, you need to have that to a certain degree. And so uh, as much as you'd like to play a bunch of guys and just keep throwing them in there, there's something to be said for continuity and chemistry. And so uh, I, I hope to see more of that, and especially in the, the tougher games. I mean, you have to have guys that, as a coach, that you just can depend on and you know exactly what you're going to get from them rather than, throwing in guys and hoping they're able to perform in any given game. So we'll see how it goes for BYU, but it is critical. I mean, they lost a great opportunity in getting, getting a marquee win yesterday. They have a, somewhat of a lesser chance here with the, with a good team. I think it would be a nice win, but more importantly, it's about getting this team ready for things uh, coming up in the future. All right, we'll uh, take a break as we tell you that uh, BYU Student Alumni Association runs the largest food drive in Utah County, and they've been doing it for more than 20 years, teaming up with community action services you can turn one dollar into three meals or 15 pounds of food go to fooddrive.byu.edu to help families in need this holiday season that's fooddrive.byu.edu time for our final break some final words before tip-off coming up next this is the byu store cougar tip-off show on the new skin byu sports network The Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on. Let's head back live courtside. All right, to BYU and St. John's getting ready to tip off here at the Mohegan Sun Arena out in Connecticut. Uh, 
three-point fluctuations. Uh, we hope there is one today uh, to the positive. BYU didn't shoot under 30% from three too frequently last year, but my stats intern Caleb Daly notifies me that in the collective games immediately following those sub-30% games last season, BYU th- shot a combined 47% from the arc in the games that followed if you bring them all together and so and average them out. So they've been a pretty good bounce-back team uh, from deep, at least they were last year. Well, I, I, I expect it. I hope for it. I think they're a good shooting team. I mean, if you want guys that can miss threes, put Jerem Jordan out on the court. But if you, you know, these guys came here because they shoot well. And so we've seen it. It's not like we're guessing that they can make threes. So I'm hoping it's a much, much better performance today. Let's pause 10 seconds now for station identification on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Radio on KBYU FM HD2 Provo. You are listening to BYU Basketball on BYU Radio. All right, tip-off of BYU and St. John's is coming up next. This has been the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show, live from the Mohegan Sun Arena in Uncasville, Connecticut. On the new skin, BYU Sports Network.